Hey guys, what's up? My name is Jimmy and welcome to my question and answer video. Now as usual, on Saturdays it's a question and answer video, however this could be the last one in a couple of weeks since I'm starting to run out of questions. Um, if you would like to see this video continue, be sure to leave your questions in the comments below or in a message and I will uh, continue making these videos. Otherwise this will be the last one for a few weeks and I'll probably just end up making tutorials for the next few Saturdays while I get some more questions. Uh, which most of you would probably prefer anyway. Uh, so this video might be a little bit longer than usual since I do have quite a few questions to go through and uh, I hope you enjoy and I hope you learn something or find anything interesting. Um, so the first question is coming from Noob Sean Gamer, and he's asking could you tell us more rendering techniques for Cinema 4D and any render affecting plugins? Since when he started using ambient occlusion for the first time he was amazed. Um, now I don't actually use Cinema 4D which is why I don't really have any tutorials for it. I don't like making tutorials for programs I'm not completely competent in because I'll probably just end up embarrassing myself saying something wrong and everyone will just correct me and I'll feel sad. Um, so yeah, sorry I can't really help you at that. Uh, so the next question comes from the photographer 1100 and he wants to know what was my first camera. My first camera which I'm actually selling at the moment is a Canon 550D or a Rebel T2i as it's known in North America. Um, so yeah. Alright, so the next question comes from Giltrix and he wants to know how to get better at using the pen tool in Photoshop since he has a lot of trouble using it. Now I know I remember when I started using Photoshop and After Effects and Sony Vegas, the pen tool does take a while to get used to. Um, but you know, just keep practicing, try and look up some basic tutorials just explaining all the different features of it and how to actually use it effectively. I might try and do a tutorial on that in a few weeks, so that might help you there. Um, otherwise just try and, you know, look up a tutorial like I said, just use it a bit, try and get the hang of it. And after a while, you know, you'll find it much, much easier to use. Okay, so the next question comes from Flypino19, and he wants to know if I was rowing a canoe through the desert and a wheel fell off, how many pancakes would it take to shingle the doghouse? And he asked me to take my time with this, so I did. I stayed up a bit last night, and I thought about it for a few hours, and I, you know, came up with some equations. My final answer is six pancakes, and I'm not sure if that's, you know, the exact right answer, but that's how many it would take me personally. Um, so the next question comes from Komi172 and he wants to know when did I first play CSS and what was my first CSS video. I first played CSS when I got my first Steam account in actually the 1st of January 2006. So this will be my 6th year of owning Steam. And I got it because my neighbor got it and I was like amazed. I was like, oh this game's awesome. And uh, yeah, so I bought it and that's pretty much it. Um, and my first CS video was probably about a year later at the time on my old YouTube channel. I did like Dragon Ball Z edits and Need for Speed edits using Fraps and I thought I was heaps good. And I just recorded myself playing public on CS Assault and CS Compound. And I got like one op shot and I was like, oh my god. And uh, yeah, so the first video I made was absolutely terrible. It had like very basic sync. It had random Sony Vegas effects like night vision and stuff. And I was just like, this is hell awesome. But yeah. That video is long deleted now, sorry, so you can't see it, but it was hilarious. Um, so the next question comes from Book It, Bookito Gang, Book It Two Gang. Um, Jimmy, I love your videos. Can you show me how to make a cool YouTube background? No, I'm actually terrible at making YouTube backgrounds. Um, I'm not very good at graphic design in general. I'm good at a couple of smaller things of it. I can do certain types of designs pretty well, but overall, I'm not very good at it whatsoever. So. I can't really help you there, but if anyone does know anyone who's really good at graphics, or you are good at graphics, I'm always looking for a cool background. Um, so the next question comes from Sabo Jalla, I think it is pronounced, and he wants to know, can you do a tutorial on how to optimize YouTube thumbnails to attract viewers? Thanks. Now if you're our YouTube partner, you can actually uh, make any image and make that your thumbnail. So just make something that you know stands out from the rest and make it some awful rainbow colored thing because it's just going to look terrible. But you know, make it something relevant, make it something that stands out. If you know someone like Philip DeFranco, he always puts like half naked chicks or hot chicks in his thumbnails. Um, but yeah, they are kind of related to his videos. So don't just put a hot chick if you're just talking about you know After Effects because it's just misleading and that's actually one of the guidelines. You can't have something misleading. I'm pretty sure that's one of the thumbnail guidelines. Um, so yeah, make it relevant, make it stand out, and spend a bit of time on it, make it look pretty decent, and yeah, it should be pretty effective. Um, so the next question comes from Rachel123125, and she wants to know, can you please say how you learnt the tips and tricks you learned for all of your intros? They're very professional looking, and you seem to come up with really good ideas when freestyling. Um, first of all, thank you. 
And where I learnt my tips and tricks, mainly just YouTube and Andrew Kramer from Video Copilot does, he has a basic training um, set of tutorials where it goes over intros um, and all different things like that, chroma keying and keyframes, so I'll put a link to that in the description, watch over the ones of those that interest you and also watch his other tutorials. Now don't just copy his tutorials, um, take the ideas he uses and apply them to your own things and you know, that way you're going to come up with something unique. Now most intros I do are all just the same techniques used in different ways, so once you do know the basics, um, it's quite amazing how you can apply those to different situations and come up with something totally different for each one. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps. Okay, so the next question comes from Sunil or Sunil, sorry I'm not sure how to pronounce that. And they have three questions. The first one, what are the things I should follow to become a YouTube partner? Um, pretty much just upload fairly regularly, get a decent sized audience and interact with that audience. Stick to a similar content and I'm fairly sure YouTube Partner is a lot easier to gain now than it was one to two and three years ago and stuff like that. It's getting much much easier now and um, all you have to do is go to www.youtube.com forward slash partners and click the apply button. It's fairly simple. Um, so as long as you don't have any copyright material, it shouldn't be too hard to get partnership. Um, so the second question is, how did you create the background music for your video? If you mean this one that's in my intro and outro and all my videos recently, um, it's actually a song called Corporate Feeling. I've been getting a lot of questions for it, and it's from Audio Jungle. Now, you do actually have to buy a license to use it. It's about 15 or $20 or something like that, and that way you can use it in all your videos. Um, and yeah, I don't actually make music. I'm not that talented. I, I've never been able to, you know, come up with good, good music. And the third and final question is, if I use any other person's music as a background music to my video in YouTube, which is only 10-15 seconds long, is that copyright offence? Now, I'm not really sure about that. Um, I'm not sure if you can only use 10-15 seconds or if you can't use it at all. You'd have to ask someone who knows a lot more about copyright than me. I just avoid using any copyrighted song full stop, um, so I don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. So that is pretty much it for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed, if you did be sure to hit that like button and I'd like to thank everyone who watched this to the end or watched it anyway, and uh, everyone who submitted your questions, so thank you very much, if you do have any other questions leave them in the comments or send them in a message and I will answer them in a future video for you. Um, otherwise, you know, feel free to leave a comment, let me know what you're doing on the weekend, are you studying for all your exams coming up, do you have anything special planned, or are you just bored at home watching YouTube videos? Um, so thank you very much, and I will see you in my next video, which is on Monday, and I will be going over how to airbrush a model's face in Photoshop. So if you're looking forward to that, be sure to subscribe, and that will be up in about two days' time. So thank you very much, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.